you won't believe how many photos I get sent of like babies with their faces all green and their hands covered in sog. That is like the greatest compliment I could ever receive. Send me all the photos of your babies eating coconut sog, please. <laughs> Hi, we are in the New York Times Studio Kitchen. I am Priya Krishna, and we are making coconut sog. It is a riff on what was probably the most popular recipe in my cookbook, Indianish, sog feta. Sog feta was a riff itself on the Indian dish sog paneer. This is a version that riffs on sog paneer, but subs the liquid for coconut milk, some of the ghee for coconut oil. It's rich and hearty without being like stick to your ribs for days. Creamy, luxurious, probably the best way that you can eat a pound of greens in my opinion. The brilliance I have always felt in this recipe is that it's a recipe for people who hate chopping or do not trust their chopping skills. You can do the worst chop on the onions, ginger and garlic, and it is all going in a blender. And also you don't have to crush your spices. You can literally do them all whole. It is all going in the blender. We're gonna start by toasting our spices, a little bit of vegetable oil, cardamom pods and coriander seed that's gonna give you that really beautiful floral, earthy flavor. You really wanna use whole if you can. Whole cardamom pods, whole coriander seed are gonna make a huge difference in making the end product that much more flavorful. So you're just gonna let these toast until you sort of start to see the coriander seeds dance around a little bit. You'll see them get golden, and most importantly, you'll be able to smell it. It only takes like a few seconds for these to go from beautifully toasted to uh, almost burnt. And we're nearing that point, so I'm gonna add the onion. And really all we're doing is just letting them sweat a little bit with the rest of the spices. I made this a couple of months ago for my friend who had just given birth. And to continue on the baby theme, she said that her milk production increased like tenfold. And then I asked my mom and she was like, oh yeah, Indian food is great for breast milk production. All right, now we're adding our ginger and garlic. And now we are going to do the magic trick that is turning this big ass bowl of mustard greens into a small, small amount of cooked greens. I like doing it in stages. Basically, I put a little bit in, I wilt it, and then I add more. I feel like this dish could be really heavy, really intense, but instead this dish is bright, it's vibrant, it's sort of singing with really electric flavors and not overcooking your greens is crucial to that. For me, if I go to an Indian restaurant and I see that their sag paneer is like almost a black color, that is not a good sign. That means that you have cooked your greens to the point where you cannot even taste the flavor of the green itself. You don't want that. Every single time I make this, I'm like, are all these greens gonna fit in the pot? Like even now I'm like, oh God, they'll fit. I'm just gonna add our last batch here. And look at that, a pound of greens easily managed. I've made this with frozen spinach, frozen kale, mustard greens, ooh, they are the best. Our greens have just barely cooked. I sort of took them off the pan immediately and kind of let them cool down a little bit. Hot things in blender can often result in explosions, so just be very careful about that. I love watching this blend because the water in the greens just makes it blend so beautifully and seamlessly. I know we've been talking a lot about baby food, but you're not looking for like a puree. I like having a few little chunks to remind me what I'm eating. I guess it's really a matter of personal preference, but I like, I like some stuff. I like some bits. We did it, we did not explode the blender. All right, ooh, it smells so good. You can really like, the coriander is big time. And importantly, it is bright green is not dark and black, this is the color we were looking for. So now I'm just gonna dump this right back in. I will show you a little trick that my mom taught me for getting all the crap out of your blender, which is to fill this with a little bit of hot water. Like if you have like boiled water from the tea and then just kind of give it swish, let it go all up the sides and then do that. Can you tell I came from a no waste family? <laughs> so now we're just gonna put this back on low heat. 
then we're gonna add chilies, green chilies, whatever fresh fruity chili you have, some salt, lime juice, and then we are going to add the best ingredient, which is coconut milk. In the original version, the liquid you add is water. Here, we're adding coconut milk. I feel like coconut milk makes everything better. When I was testing this, I was like, half a cup of coconut milk, maybe a third a cup of coconut milk. Add the full can of coconut milk, is what I say. And like, look at that beautiful color. I mean, my God. If you're making this recipe with paneer, remember that paneer is salty. But if you're making it with tofu, remember the tofu is not salty and salt accordingly. Mm. Ooh. Now we're gonna cook our tofu. Just stick that in there. And again, you can use paneer, you can use tofu. So while the tofu basically just warms through, we're gonna make the chonk. So this is the tempering of spices that goes on top of this. This is like sort of the like mwah, the chef's kiss, the icing on the cake. You could eat it like this, but why would you eat it like this when you can make it like 10 times more delicious with the chonk? In the traditional version in Indianish, you make the chonk with ghee. I'm gonna make it with coconut oil because I feel like that last final hit of like rich coconutiness really just brings the dish home. So we're gonna toast our cumin seeds first. I like to toast the cumin seeds before adding anything else because you really wanna make sure that they're nice and brown and you're really smelling that smoky flavor. Cumin seeds and a coconut oil, that was like a revelation for me. Oh, so good. So these are getting nice and brown. So I'm gonna add some chili powder. If you want it, you can also add a dried chili. I like doing that for a little extra spice and some nice presentation. And like, oh, look at that. It just turns this beautiful color. You can really smell the like garlicky, oniony flavor of the asafoetida. You can tell that this Kashmiri chili powder is very potent. It's gonna be a nice and spicy one. And then turn the heat off, give it a stir, and then dump it over the top. This is like the most beautiful part of the whole dish is, ooh, jumping the chonk on top. I like to like make little swirls in it. It just looks so pleasing. The hot oil in the green sog. That is literally it. That is how you make coconut sog. It is so easy. Eat this over rice, roti. You can call it a full meal. It's super filling, super green. Dare I say like a little healthy for you. This is the best part of filming these videos. Like I said, it's perfect every time, no matter how you make it. You can actually taste the flavor of the mustard greens, the like peppery bite. The tofu is soaked up all the spiced greeny goodness. I will never not love this dish. I really think that I could eat this every day. The chonk just brings it to the next level. It's like, again, rich without being overbearing. Oh, beautiful. So for this recipe and all my other recipes, you can go to NYT Cooking. And for the source material for this recipe, you can check out my cookbook, Indianish.